right, we're going back to Jeffrey Builder. If you went to the uh, strategic initiatives corner in the bigger ambitions room, you saw that in the upcoming list, we have improvements to reference matching is uh, the first listed goodie in that uh, list over there. So take it away, Jeffrey. Thank you. Admire my self-restraint and not whacking Paul on the back of the head when I walked by him. <laughs> Thanks a lot for that, Paul. That was great. Um, So um, let me see if I can locate our points. That's me. And you may be familiar with my group, um, colloquially known as the Labs Group. Um, they look like this. I'm kidding, actually, I should introduce them. Uh, Joe Wass, uh, who many of you probably already know, um, is uh, in the UK and has been working with me for a few years, but we have two new hires. Uh, one who is here, Esha Data, in the, uh, in the back, I think, there. I encourage you to talk to her. And uh, Dominika Taksik, who uh, is based in Dublin and couldn't be here. And unfortunately, she couldn't be here because uh, the bulk of what I'm talking about in this presentation has to do with some work that she's been doing uh, for us uh, in the labs group. So we're talking about reference matching. And um, what I'm doing here is I'm actually summarizing, summarizing uh, two blog posts that have just come out in the past few days. And I encourage you to go and read these. Um, they're long. Um, Dominica is, uh, is a recently left academic, and, um, and when she first drafted them, they were even longer. And I said, no, no, none of us has an attention span that long. Um, and she has made the, and then she's, and she's rewritten them, and, they, and they're, they're just fantastic describing some of the work we're doing. As I'm saying, as I said, this is the first two in a series because we're doing some very major work looking at our reference matching and she's summarizing the work here, and we've got, I think, already two other blog posts that are gonna be coming out uh, soon talking about um, some of the other stuff that we've discovered. But I'm gonna focus on these two things at the moment and talk about what it is that we're trying to do. So, reference matching. Um, I am hoping you know what it is. It is the thing that we do where we take a string that looks roughly like this, and we try, ideally, to turn it into this. That is, look up that metadata, figure out what DOI has been assigned to it, and return that information. And we do this in a number of, of, of our systems, and our APIs are used for this by a number of systems. And, and it's really kind of critical to a lot of the work that we do. Um, and a lot of you insert your references, take, these, take our system and, and look up references and insert DOIs and link your references. That's one of your obligations. So it is something that we all uh, depend on. But it's one of these things where I think we built it uh, quite a long time ago. And it was pretty much a black box. Nobody really thought much about it. It seemed to work in the background. We were kind of happy that it was a black box. We didn't have to think about it. It seemed to work. Um, and, 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 and all was good. But this black box is doing something that's really important to us. It's taking these references, passing through this, and then spitting out a, a, a DOI at the end, ideally, right? And ideally, um, we're taking these things and we're, you know, saying, okay, we've got a bunch of correct links, and we're putting them in our references section, and then that is driving traffic to our other members, and we're creating this virtuous circle of linking um, citations. But, oh, sorry. But I'm kind of unhappy with black boxes. I kind of like to know what's going on in them. And, um, and so a, a while ago, a few, about a year or so ago, I started looking at stuff to try and figure out um, how the system was working and whether it, was, whether it, was, whether it could be improved. Um, it's, it's tempting to let things like this lie, but um, I was curious about several things. Um, one was, what level of false negatives uh, do we get? That is, if we have a record for a, uh, for, for a work in our data set, 
and somebody submits a textual uh, reference, how often do we say we can't find it, right? And the other thing that I was interested in knowing a little bit about was false positives. That is, how often do we actually return the wrong reference to somebody? Now, at some level, when you look at these things, right, this is a trade-off. It's a classic sort of um, uh, information, uh, uh, you know, uh, management trade-off, recall versus precision. Um, and ideally, we'd like to be able to have a strike a balance between these and have a way of controlling these variables for different kinds of applications. So, for instance, if you have a completely automated application, um, you may want to and you're not going to have a person looking at the results to double check them, you might want to favor very high precision over recall, right? And conversely, if you have a search engine where a person is actually going to be looking at the first five results, you may want to actually reduce your precision level in order to give better recall. But I didn't, you know, and we didn't really have a clear view of exactly what the precision versus recall um, uh, 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 stats were for our system. And this is where I'm supposed to wave the flag, so consider it waved. One of the big problems that we have um, is that our traditional ways of doing some of the things that we've been doing, reporting on the performance of our members, like how many orchids they deposited, how many funder IDs, and so on and so forth, involves something that's pretty uh, time consuming. That is actually counting absolutely every record that has orchids in them, every record that has uh, funder identifiers in them. For a lot of the new things that we're going to be starting to look at, right, to try and figure out what, how our, how our uh, publishers are performing, we're not going to be able to do that, right? So for instance, there are some other things that we would like to be able to do and that we would like to be able to add to things like participation reports and so on and so forth. For instance, we'd like to know how many redirects somebody has to go through in order to reach a landing page, right? Because this has a big effect on, on, on robots and tools and things like that. We might want to know whether um, our members have actually uh, followed our DOI display guidelines. Um, and we may need to be able to resolve those things. We can't do that for all of our members' uh, data. And similarly, with references, we can't just check and match every reference in our entire system and, and you know, again and again and again and see what's happening. So we have to start being a bit more intelligent about how we do this, and this is one of the big things that uh, Dominique has been working on, um, and that is how do we build a good sampling framework so that we can start making um, informed decisions about um, our metadata, about the behavior of DOIs, about the behavior of our systems, without having to look at absolutely everything. So, um, so the first blog post, for those of you who are sort of just, you know, familiar with the stats and the issues involved is really sort of an, an introduction to stats. Um, and in particular, an introduction to stats and how they're going to apply, be applied in the Crossref, um, in the Crossref context. And um, in this case, what you wanted to be able to do is test our existing matching uh, technology and compare it with a theory that we had about our matching technology um, and how we might be able to improve it. And so one of the first things that she wanted to do was establish how much data did she need to look at to start getting an accurate picture of how matching was behaving in our system. And I've got to emphasize this work hasn't been completed yet. This is just the first of two, two of a of, 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 of few experiments that we've conducted. So the first blog post talks about this. And we actually came to a, a kind of satisfying answer to that, which is that we can probably get pretty good data with not looking at too much, right? So we actually have a built-in function in our API, which is called conveniently enough sample. And so if you want a random selection of uh, DOIs to test, and this is a fantastic way of testing uh, libraries and tools that you build using our, our, our API, you can add this sample parameter and it will give you a random selection of works back. So you can actually get a representative sample fairly quickly and experiment with it. And what we did is we took some samples of our metadata and um, our first experiment was to create synthetic 
um, synthetic citations, right? So how we did this was we queried our database uh, for a sample of DOIs. We took every record, and then we passed the record through our DOI citation formatter, which is another API. So we can take our metadata, send it to this thing, and say, give me this metadata back in APA or Vancouver or Chicago or MLA or what have you. And it will give us back a string uh, 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 a citation. So we would take this and we generated a bunch of different citation styles. Um, so we did a few big standard ones that, that seem to be used heavily in the industry. Um, and then we did some mildly degraded versions of those things because we wanted to see if we could fool our matching algorithm into giving us false positives or, 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 or false negatives. So we took two of them and we kind of mangled them a little bit. So we mixed up the words and removed authors and stuff like that. And then we created three pretty severely degraded versions of these things as well. So one where we only had the title and the first author and no other information. One where we had the title but with all stop words removed. One where we had the title, and I kid you not, but with all the words of the title in a scrambled order, right? And we threw these against our system to see how, um, whether we could match. Now, think about this, right? We're taking a record, we know it's in the system, we're formatting it, and we're throwing it against it, and it should ideally, obviously we strip the DOI out of the textual string, otherwise that would kind of defeat the purpose. Um, so we strip the DOI out of the textual representation, we throw it against the system, and we get a result, and if it's the same DOI, yay, it's working. If it's not, then our matching is kind of messy, screwy. So we push these through first our, our existing system, right? And one of the things that we found, and this was referred to earlier um, by, um, in, in, in a few of the talks, was that we actually have a fairly high false negative rate. That is, things that are in our database, we don't match. And this could be, and we're trying to drill down on this at the moment, not with synthetic data, but with real data. This could be anywhere between 15 to 35 percent. All right? So we could, in theory, link a lot more stuff. But if anybody here knows anything about information theory, you know that there's a trade-off, usually, between recall and precision. Um, and we had a theory about what was going on here, right, which was that um, the current system, what it actually does is it takes a reference, like the thing on the left, parses it, or attempts to parse it, into independent fields and then does a query on those fields in our system. And we had a theory that this parsing bit was fraught and causing trouble and was making it reduce, you know, be, be, be too uh, difficult to actually get a, a good recall. And so we did an experiment where we bypassed that parsing bit and went straight to search. And the results were that we got far higher recall with a slight dip, but a noticeable dip in precision. And so we then proceeded, and this is a, sort of a summary of basically what we've seen. Um, so the legacy approach is the approach that I described where we parse it first, and then we query the database. Uh, the SBM approach, right, which is basically the, the naive search approach. We, bait, we throw it against the search engine, and we pick the first item, right? And then we had a normalized threshold approach where we would adjust the score that we would cut off at depending on some variables like the length of the query um, and the content types that were returned and so on and so forth. And then this third one, which is where we would combine the third approach and then also do a post check to make sure um, to, 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 to check individual fields um, and make sure that they were high, um, that, they, that they had a high match. And as you can see, one of the results is that we are actually able to get far, far better recall with a tiny, small dip in precision. So it means that we can potentially start linking lots more references. Now remember I said that we did this for lots of different citation styles. And so one of the other things that we found that's very interesting is that the citation style that you use has a very, very big impact on your ability to match. And one of the things that we, you know, we were aware of 
but, um, and we're in the process of trying to figure out how big an issue it is, is that there are certain citation styles where they do not include the title, and these are particularly popular in physics and chemistry. And they're really, really hard to match using these systems. So there's one thread of stuff that we're going to start doing where we're going to actually start analyzing what citation styles are used by our members, right, um, to find out whether or not we're going to want to be able to tweak this algorithm uh, depending on what kind of members' content we're looking at, right? So this has opened up a whole uh, bunch of opportunities. As a side effect, one of the things Dominique has discovered is that we've actually been able to create a classifier now where somebody can give us a textual string and we can tell you what citation style it's using with a pretty good uh, level of accuracy. So all of a sudden, we're going to be able to start doing some major tweaks of our citation matching uh, algorithm. So this box, right, this black box is, is, is open now. We're starting to get a picture of A, how it works, B, what its limitations are, and C, how we can tweak it so that we can overcome some of these limitations and improve our citation matching. So this is going to be an ongoing project. Clearly, this is an important function for all of us. And so we're going to be taking this forward. And I encourage you to keep looking at our blogs because the next stage is that we're looking at, instead of synthetic data, real data, that is stuff provided by our members, um, uh, which a lot of which, interestingly enough, we can already say doesn't follow any known citation style. Um, and we're throwing it against the system um, as well to make sure that these findings are robust. So again, uh, the details are in these blog posts. They're very well written and entertaining. I encourage you to go and see them. Um, and you're going to see a few more uh, in the near future. So thanks a lot. And I'm happy to take any questions. And I'm sorry I didn't have my clock up here, so I have no idea whether I've run over time. Have I run over time? Any plans to make those available as separate services so that we could just match those things as separate API calls? And, and number two, any plans to change how we actually get the matches? Right. So, um, <clears throat> so um, at the moment, we're just trying to figure out whether we can improve the matches, right? There are two things that we're going to do. Whatever code we develop um, is going to be open, so anybody can use it. Uh, but you're right. What we'll probably do is wrap that up into a service. At the moment, if you know our API, we actually do have a specialized parameter, a query parameter, query bibliographic, which already does some stuff. Um, and it, the, the question is, will we extend that or will we provide a separate service endpoint for it? Yes. And then as to the latter question, I think that's probably more of a, a, a production level thing of having to do with the, with the existing uh, matching stuff. Any other questions? Thanks a lot. Thank you, Jeffrey.